check it out I have a Kershaw Skyline extremely dull I used that work to cut some tape that we had to lay down on concrete so it got scraped up with the concrete quite a bit it is extremely dull now will not catch paper at all only sharp part of the blade is the the heel of the blade which still isn't that sharp we're going to take this to a razor sharp edge using the wicked edge sharpener I'm going to start with the 50 and 80 grit ultra coarse stones and go up to the 12 and 1600 grit ceramics and see see how it gets from there see the tip of this knife is really worn out had to use the tip of it to scrape up tape off the concrete too kind of abused it oh well $25 knife. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and set the Kershaw skyline in the vise. I put some tape on each side of the blade to prevent it from scratching. I have this knife set in the top hole. I'm going to match the tip up with the letter B, which is where I set it at every time. and I'm pressing down to make sure the blade stays even and it's contacting the two pins then I'm going to tighten this up the top screw and I'm going to squeeze in on the bottom of the vise tighten it again squeeze tighten so it's pretty tight and by now the knife should be fairly tight in the vise it should not be able to move and then you go to the bottom screw turn it until it makes contact and turn it approximately a half turn usually I just turn it a quarter of a turn and that's plenty to keep this knife sturdy you don't want to over tighten it otherwise you might bend the vise I've already went through that once we're going to set the vise up to a 15 degree angle on each side the steel on the skyline is 14C28N, so it should be able to hold up to a shallow edge. Alright, I have the light set up here to where it's glaring off the edge of the blade so you can see what's happening a little more clearly. And I'm going to start out with the 50 and 80 grit, but first I'm going to do a little pass with the 100 grit just so you can see how it sounds compared to the 50 and 80 and here's the 200 grit I wasn't going to use these until I contacted the Wicked Edge about these, but I'm going to go ahead and use them because I'm sure they're going to replace them anyway. One thing I noticed about these is they are much thicker than the other stones. I measure all the stones that I have with the calipers and they're all within a half of a millimeter tolerance. And you can tell the thickness difference on these 50 and 80 grit stones. They are much thicker they're about two millimeters thicker and then on top of that my 80 grit is they're not even flat you see it goes upward it's at a slanted angle here's the 50 grit I have not used this at all yet this is going to be the first time so they're not broken in yet. Very rough. Very rough. Right now a lot of the diamond stones are just flying off. The ones that didn't get set in the metal correctly they're loose they're gonna fly off 
so you get them broken in then they're gonna do that don't want to do with these is create a burr. You don't want to apex the edge. You want to go until you're right close to the apex and then go to the 80 grit and try not to create a burr. And then once you go to the 100 grit or the 200, you can go ahead and apex the edge and create a burr. Because I've heard of micro chipping on the edge of the blade, and if that happens, it may take a few sharpenings to get out those micro chips. All right, I'm done with the 50 grit. Switch over to the 80. That feels much smoother than the 50. Doesn't feel as bumpy or rough. Feels much better. done with the 80 grit now. I'll make a couple more real light passes. That way it'll take less time for the 100 grit to remove the 80 grit scratches. Right now I'm on the 100 grit stones. We just finished reprofiling the edge to a 15 degree bevel. It was a 20 degree. We did that with a 50 and the 80 grit. The 50 and 80 grit was really aggressive and it took up took off very large pieces of metal with just in just a small amount of time and it's very easy to take off too much metal so you want to limit your use on a 50 and 80 you need to make sure you use your jeweler's loop and, and stop right before you create a burr but Here's what the edge looks like with a 100 grit scratch pattern. That's at 30x. Alright, I'm getting ready to check for a burr so I can see if I'm ready to move on to the next grit or not. And how I check for a burr is sharpen one side of the blade for about 30 seconds and then take my microfiber and scratch it along the side that I was sharpening and notice that I don't hear anything and if there's a burr when I scrape it up this way I should be able to hear it catching on the microfiber which I can. This side should be silent. 
from this side. I hear it catching, so there's a burr. So I need to do that to this side also. All right, now that I've spent a little more time on the left side, I'm pretty sure that I've created a burr now. If that's true, we can go to the next step. catching so that means we've apexed the edge on both sides and we can go to the 200 grit now it's very crucial that you create a burr if you do not you you could go to 30,000 grit and you still not have a sharp edge it's very critical that you create a burr in the first set of stones that you use That, that's the problem that a lot of people run into is they start out sharpening they go through all the grits and when they're done they wonder why that their edge is not sharp once you get more experienced and you know how to examine an edge you don't necessarily have to create a burr once you know that you've apexed the edge I mean it takes some experience and knowledge of what an edge should look like while you're sharpening and once you get that down you don't necessarily have to test for a burr I mean you just know that you've apexed the edge or you're really close to it what I usually do is just look at the loop and you can tell how close you are to the edge All right. I can switch over to the 200 grit now. Notice the sound difference. You'll notice a sound difference in each set of stones as you go up. Right now at the 200 grit, it feels, still feels rough and gritty. As you get up to the 6 and 800 grit is when it starts to feel a lot smoother. You can actually hear the sound difference. The difference between when you start a new grit and when you're done with that grit. That kind of tells you when you're done without even having to look at it under the microscope. that's because on a microscopic level there's peaks and valleys left by the 100 grit and when you start using the 200 grit it's not a perfect mating surface against the stone and the steel and after you've smoothed out those peaks and valleys with the 200 grit there's a flatter mating surface and it causes it to sound smoother that tells me that I'm done now with the 200 grit. Okay, I'm going to start with the 400 now. Actually, let me wipe this dust off.
Now is where I'm really paying attention to holding the stones as flat as I can on that blade and using very light uniform pressure. Alright, I'm going to finish up with a 400 grit using very, very light strokes. Now what I usually do to do that is hold a flashlight in the other hand and look where the stone contacts the blade to make sure that it is flat against the blade and there are no gaps. It's easy to keep the stone flat against the blade when you're using moderate pressure but when you're using very very light pressure sometimes if you're not paying attention the stone will lift off the blade a little bit you want to make sure it stays completely flat This blade feels extremely sharp right now. If you were to hand this to somebody and ask them to feel how sharp it is, they would say that is the sharpest knife they've ever felt. But in reality, it is it is sharp, but it's the toothy edge that makes it feel that way. I bet it's so toothy right now that I could cut tissue. I got a regular paper towel right here. See if it'll cut it. Oh, look at that. Cuts no problem. Wow. Yeah, that is pretty, pretty toothy. Takes a very fine toothy edge to cut tissue with ease. Wow, look at that. No problem. Yeah, let's do that again. Oh, that's pretty cool. I'm done now with the 400 grit. This is what the edge looks like under 30x magnification. And this is what it looks like under 60x magnification. Switch over to 600 grit. Now that feels smooth. feels really smooth. This edge is already starting to get that really nice shine to it. It's reflecting light very well right now. It's kind of nice to see a really dull crappy edge go to a, a really nice flat perfectly even bevel. I'm finishing up the 600 grit now. Wow. All that that bite that the 400 grit had is all gone now. Now it just feels like a normal sharpen knife. It doesn't have those teeth that it used to have. Um, so here's a piece of tissue. Let's see if it'll cut the tissue still. Yep. We're only at 600 grit right now. Let's see how well it push cuts foam but paper. The wicked edge makes an edge so fine at just 600 grit that it push cuts no problem at all. Just because it push cuts phone book paper doesn't mean it's hair woodling sharp. At 600 grit, it's not enough to whittle a hair. We're almost done. Now we're going to put on the 800.
Alright. Finishing out the 800 grit. And then next I'll move on to the 1000 grit, then the 1200 grit ceramics, and the 1600 grit ceramic. No bite at all. See the edge. Is a very even, uniform edge. See how well the push guts foam book paper at the 800 grit? Much, much smoother. Been trying to get the hair to catch on here at the 800 grit, and it ain't working, so 800 grit is not enough to whittle hair. Alright, here's the 1000 grit. Very quiet, doesn't make that much sound. Very smooth. Alright, finishing up with the 1000 now. Remember when you're doing the finer grits, it's best to not remove the stone from the blade at all. Just to work one side and keep the stone on the blade. Because you have a greater chance of nicking the blade when you place the stone on there. Alright, let's see how the 1000 grit cuts on the paper. Makes almost no noise at all when cutting. I'm wondering how these are going to turn out compared to the 1000 and 1500 grit sandpaper. Initial impressions on how these feel. They feel really smooth. The stones are really lightweight, so they're easy to work against the blade. It's really easy to use for very light pressure. Alright, I'm done with the 1200 grit ceramic stones and I'm really impressed in how quickly it took out the 1000 grit scratch pattern. I spent maybe two minutes using the 1200 grit stones and the 1000 grit diamond scratch pattern is completely gone. Now keep in mind diamonds make 
pretty deep cuts and this edge looks very nice and clean right now you can't even really see any lines at all from the 1200 grit scratch pattern I'm going to go ahead and start on the 1600 grit ceramics notice I've never used these stones yet it's going to be the first time One thing I really like about these stones, and I'm really impressed, is how flat the ceramic part is. They're really flat and they produce a really clean, flat bevel. Unlike the diamond stones, the diamond stones are rounded on the corners to, uh, they're made to fit many different blade styles and shapes. The stock Wicked Edge stones are designed to work with most recurved blades. Right now I'm using the 1600 grit ceramic stone. I'm doing the final touches. I don't have a mirror polish finish yet. I think I'm going to have to still tape on sandpaper before I go to the strops. See how well it cuts foam book paper. Pitch cuts no problem. Let's see if 1600 grit is enough to whittle hair. And no it is not. So I'm going to go ahead and tape on 2500 grit sandpaper to the ceramic stone. And I'm going to see if we can get a mirror polish finish that way. And this is why I really like the ceramic stones. Because they're perfectly flat makes taping sandpaper to the stones really easy and you get really great results I have on here the 2500 grit sandpaper I'm gonna see if we can get our mirror polish finished without going to the 2000 first That's coming out really good. Alright, I have the 2500 grit sandpaper taped to the 1600 grit ceramic stone. And after spending just 10 seconds on it, I noticed the mirror polish starting to come out. I can manage to remove all the previous scratch patterns with the 2500 grit. Then all I have to do is go to the strops. If I can't, then I'll have to back down to the 2000 grit. Or maybe even the 1500 grit and then work my way up. Somebody asked me how I tape the sandpaper to the stones, and this is how I do it. Just cut a 1 inch by 5 inch strip and tape it to the stone. I went ahead from the 1600 grit ceramic and taped 2500 grit sandpaper on to see if it would remove the 1600 grit scratch pattern and it looks like it has so that eliminates the 
the 2000 grit sandpaper I can go straight from the 1600 to the 2500 grit with no issues at all this already has a nice mirror finish to it this is only going to get better after I strop it I'm going to test sharpness to see if it will whittle hair it wouldn't do it at the 1600 grit stage let's see if it will do it at the 2500 grit stage yep. so it whittles hair at 2500 grit this is what the edge looks like after finishing the 2500 grit has a very nice polish to it a very fine scratch pattern that will be removed after stropping alright this is after the 2500 grit up close you can still see the scratches it's not a perfect mirror finish yet but we're most of the way there and it looks like a mirror polish at certain angles when you look at it like that right there so you can see the speakers in the edge speakers are about three feet away Here's a better view of the edge after the 2500 grit. This is with a 30x jeweler's loop. That's what the edge looks like. It's all well does it push cut foam with paper at 2500 grit. Push cuts really well. To get the sharpest edge that I know is possible before I move on to the 5 and 3.5 micron strops, I make sure that it will whittle a hair at the 2500 grit stage. If it won't whittle hair at the 2500 grit stage, you'll probably bring out the hair whittling sharpness on the strops, but if you want it as sharp as you can possibly get it, make sure that it's hair whittling before you move on to the straps and I make sure it's hair whittling across the entire length of the edge and it is All right here I've got the 5 and 3.5 micron diamond straps have the camera set up to where you can see the the increase on the polish as it gets more polish you should be able to see it as I'm sharpening I really wish the wicked edge went lower than 15 degrees because it's recommended that you lower your sharpening angle while you strop so if I sharpen at 15 I should be able to set the wicked edge to 14 degrees to strop otherwise you risk actually dulling the edge a little bit it's always best to strop at a lower angle but these leather straps on the wicked edge are, are pretty firm so you don't have to worry about it really it's just you have to use really really light pressure
so a second ago just to recap we were already hair whittling sharp at 2500 grit so what does the 5 micron diamond paste on leather straps do to the edge if it was already hair whittling sharp anything after this is pretty much just getting it really scary sharp and polishing the edge it's scary sharp right now it catches the hair just like a a Gillette razor would on every part of the blade it's hair whittling sharp so now I'm going to switch over to 3.5 strop And with this knife I want to test hair whittling sharpness. I want to see how long this edge will hold a hair whittling edge. I'll start out by cutting phone book paper then I'll go to regular paper and for some reason I, I really don't think no matter how many cuts I make in the phone book paper it's not going to dull the hair whittling edge. I don't think phone book paper is that abrasive at all. Because it seems on my M4 steel, I can have a hair whittling edge and it stays like that for days. And I cut a lot of paper throughout the day. Mostly it's part of my job too. So it's best to have a hair whittling edge at work. Alright, this is after the 3.5 micron strop. I'm going to take a hair and go along the edge to make sure the entire length of the edge is hair whittling sharp. Cut. 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 This is what the edge looks like after the 3.5 micron strop. It has a very nice even reflective surface. And this edge turned out really, really great. A lot of this has to do with the new ceramics that I got. Really impressed. Check out the mirror polish on this edge so far. Just did the 3.5 micron. Looks pretty sweet. It matches the the blade that I had polished myself using some sandpaper with some mag polish and a Dremel. As you can see, I only did one side of the blade. I just want to see what it would look like. Alright, after the 3.5 micron strop, I go to the, I think these are the 0.5 and the 0.25 micron diamond spray on leather strops. I like these a lot more than the other strops with the diamond paste. The diamond spray feels way smoother it just glides along the blade a lot easier there's no sticky tack feeling to it because the spray is it's just a lot smoother alright I'm about finished with the 0.5 micron So a second ago we were at 3.5 micron and we were already scary sharp. So what do you get when you go down to 0.5 micron? 
Well, I'm not really sure how to describe it. All I can do is take a hair off my head and show how easy it'll cut a hair. Cut, 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 cut. cut. Alright, cut. I'm complete with the half micron. I will switch over to the quarter micron strop now. I even notice a little smoother feel when switching to the quarter micron. The diamonds are half the size of the 0.5 micron. The smaller a particle is, the less friction there's going to be. So that's why it's smoother right now. You could strop up and down. I actually recommend doing it a little bit, but for most of the stropping, I would suggest an up and away like this. Because if your previous uh, sharpening patterns are up and down, you're pushing the high spots into the low spots, leveling it out on a microscopic level. Therefore, you're, you'll get a mirror, a better mirror finish and a finer edge. So after the quarter micron strop, I'll attempt to show how sharp that is. Cuts, cuts, cuts. And this is a actually really thin hair compared to the other hairs. The thinner the hair, the harder it is to cut, and vice versa. Cut, 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 cut. I notice that the sharper the edge gets, when I cut the hair, the hair has a little curly thing on the end of it every time I cut. That tells me that it was sharper than it was before. So now we've got a hair whittling edge that push cuts foam but paper in almost silence. Like I said before, the quieter the sound is when you cut foam but paper, the sharper and more refined the edge is. I feel no restriction at all when cutting this. Pretty darn sharp. So after all that cutting, let's see if we're still at a hair whittling sharpness. My next vid is going to be to see how many cuts into phone book paper or regular paper it takes to get rid of that hair whittling edge. Well, after I did a, after I wiped down the blade and I tested sharpness again. I see that it still whittles hair, so it's going to take a lot more than you know, 10 or so cuts to get rid of a hair whittling edge. There's a close up of the blade. You can still see some scratches in the blade, probably from the 1600 grit. But you only see those scratches when you have the light glaring off the blade. Otherwise, it looks like a mirror, a polished edge. See the text is really clear.
see that speaker in the edge I think when we were at the what was it uh, 2500 grit you could see sort of what the speaker looked like but there wasn't any detail now you can see the speaker in detail you can see both speakers pretty good check out the other side of the edge just finished with the 0.25 micron that edge looks really nice now all I gotta do is polish this side of the blade to match the other side look at how clear that text is off of the camera lens check out that mirror finish you can't even see scratches at 30x that looks clean this is a very nice looking edge see how far I can pull the camera back and still see the reflection in the blade right now I'm about six inches right now I'm about a foot away about 18 inches so all this awesome sharpening done on the wicked edge see you guys later